Okay. <clears throat> hello anyone may hello anyone who may be watching now or later and welcome to yep. We, we still need to hammer out what we're going to how we're going to yep. Uh, well, yeah, welcome to the stream. In any case, yeah, we really need to figure out something to say consistently with that or just stop doing it all the same. And yeah, welcome all the same. And I'm Hillian along with... Kier, the face and the hungry. <laughs> and today we're going back to Minecraft for a bit, though we might be doing it a bit shorter because, yeah, I got a bit of uh, bad news earlier. Yeah, it might need a bit of checking up on. Uh, last time we worked a lot on this arcane forge here. And yeah, I, I put up the book. I don't think I put up the bookcases on stream, but yeah, here they are now at least. And Looks like you're missing some. Yeah, there, I believe 15 is the maximum amount that can be, uh, that can have an effect. But yeah, it does make it look like there's one missing here. Also, why can't I interact with this thing? It's something break. Wait, what? Okay, the hell? What? Is the server breaking? Because that would make for a very, very, very short stream then. Let's try reconnect. Uh, hopefully that'll eat. Okay, this connection was... The connection is weak. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Oop, the hell now? Okay, I think the server might be a bit too unstable at the moment to actually be usable. Uh, is, this, is this due to the uh, recent update? It shouldn't be because the servers run on a specific uh, <clears throat> on a specific uh, version of the game. Hmm. Yeah, then it shouldn't be that. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, yeah, if if it keeps, yeah, something is up with the server. Hmm. I'm I'm eating. I might need to go poke the people on the. Discord server about this. Uh, uh, where the f hell are we even now? Minus 37, minus... Okay. It's, it's like that time we... This happened before somehow, that with uh, one of the nether portals, I think. Uh, let's see, home one, I believe it, I believe, let's see, nice homes. Deep slate or something? Now I changed it up, I made a new one. Oh. So I don't know what I, I don't remember what I called it now. Either way though, uh, let's try and find a way out of this. Uh, I'll, I'll oh, you picking up give a poke things. on the... Yep, yep. Okay, now we... Okay, let's go see if that enchanting table is still there. Okay. But it's still... Okay, yeah, something is broken. Oh, there it was, connection lost. I'll go poke, give a poke on the Discord about this. Um... And back into the freaking deep slate. Yeah, something has something has gone broken. And also apparently it's an eclipse. Seriously, eclipse breaks level. the world. Now I doubt, and there we. Okay, I don't get what's going on. Let's check if we can even. In... 
Actually, now that I think about it, we can't use this chest because of the glass on top of it. It's it's blocking it from being opened anyways. Uh, yeah, I can't interact anything. So, well, I guess that makes for a very short stream then. <laughs> because we can't do a fucking thing. Yeah, like, sh if they're able to restore the server quickly, fine, but... Yeah, if you're going to need to wait a while, then, yeah. Not much of a stream. <laughs> Let's give it one last attempt. And if it disconnects us again, then, yeah. <laughs> An even shorter stream than I anticipated. Because I was thinking about only going for like an hour or an hour and a half. Because, yeah, a bit of bad family news. Nothing like a death or something, but somebody caught corona in it. Yeah, somebody in the family caught corona. Uh, I don't know about the exact details of it all. And, yeah, I'd say this is a pretty much... We're not going to be able to do anything. <laughs> but from what I heard, she attended the party where some jackass, well, either wasn't uh, vaccinated or the fuck. Okay. Or, yeah, managed to pick it up somewhere and, yeah, didn't isolate. Yep. At the very least, we have a bit of a view as we fall into nothingness. <laughs> it's kind of freaky. Yep. <laughs> Minus 4,000 blocks. Uh, luckily, the disconnection also means that if, well, we can't die at the moment from this. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, let's wait for it to teleport us back onto something solid before we do manage to, well, get ourselves stuck into the void. <laughs> yep. There we go. Then. Oh, well. <laughs> well, this was an attempt at a stream. Uh, yeah, so we just call it here, then we'll try something else, then. Because we didn't have really have anything <laughs> prepared for it more. Yeah. Uh... A good question. I'm only sure what else to do. Uh, do you still have that zombie core game installed? Uh, actually, no. I I put that off the shelf. Uh, hmm. Ah. Actually, let's do something a bit different then. Uh, let's change this up. Okay, changing yeah. the title. Yeah, that can work. And yeah, if Minecraft doesn't want to work, then we can just play a game that I actually like playing for yeah, and recently. And I'll actually have to change one of these to actually read it. Uh, let's see. I'll put it on one of the Sun Showcase Sunday ones normally, because those going to aren't going to be in use for a bit. So yeah, that should catch it any second now once it's gone comes up uh, make that see through uh, no not okay is it going to catch it or not actually i i know why it's not catching it it's because it's hidden so of course it's not going to show so yeah instead of minecraft uh, wait is somebody fucking with the in, with our internet then if if the no, we're the stream is working. So, what the hell else is? I should have good internet. Let me d check. Uh, open network and systems. Da -da 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 -da. No disconnection there. Task manager then. Performance. Ethernet is connected. It's also kind of maxing out because of the stream. Uh, um, let's let's try that again. If it doesn't work, then yeah, something fucky is going on. Yeah, kind of weird. Like at least on Minecraft, we could go in and see things uh, before disconnecting. Hmm. I don't think I've disconnected with Vermintide at any, at any point. Uh, oh, apparently I forgot to change the freaking game. That is, this is said. 
It, it'll be a bit odd if it's advertised as freaking Tales of Monkey Island. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hope it works now. Otherwise, we yeah either have to find something else or just give up 10 minutes in. Hmm. There we go. Blocking prevents damage, but uses up stamina. The shields, if you're out of stamina, you can't block. Uh, yeah, I, I plan to do a lot more stream. I plan to do this game, to stream this game as a series for its story. And also a bit of a combat guide, so to speak. Uh, but for now... Ahead, is it? Oh, takes me back. For now, let's just go do some random missions uh, instead. <laughs> And, yeah, I need to do some missions as the Grail Knight, which we are playing as, anyways. Wait, no, hold on. Right now, and if it wasn't for Fort Braxenbrugger, they'd mm -hmm. be even farther afield. I'd suggest you get out there and make sure Fort Braxenbrugger holds. Avoid the siege lines by taking a secret path down by the river. Chances are the rat men know about it, but beggars can't be choosers. Right, now that's yeah. over. Uh, right, what was I to say? Oh, right. You're a grey light. And you don't speak like one? How dare you? Okay, uh, let's see. Where's your French accent? <laughs> well, Marcus Kruger ain't exactly French. Uh, oh, yeah, wait. Why is he a grey light? That. that... Okay, that confuses uh, me. I, I, I like the idea that... Yeah, yeah for, I know Bretonians are the only ones having Grey Knights, so Marcus being a Grey Knight is a bit... It's also a bit odd there, when, when you think about it. Yeah, I don't know uh, Warhammer stuff enough to, <laughs> to know, but I think it is... It's probably told somewhere. In, Berserker. But uh, yeah, Vermintide 2 is basically left for dead but rats. <laughs> and very enjoyable if you say me if you ask me. Yeah. Is it there's Kaven Warriors of Nurgle and uh, Beastmen? Beastmen. Yep. Okay. Nope. That's Berserker. High damage. But, yeah, they're easy enough to deal with. Um, FPS is running about 50. It's not looking too bad or too stuttery or anything. Not on my end. Okay, then it shouldn't be for the stream either. The only difference between this stream and what you see might be, yeah, stuttering due to how... Due to, uh, yeah, maybe not being able to handle, uh, be handled by the connection. Uh, those hit markers, those are from a mod. I have, well, I have a bunch of mods installed on this for quality of life stuff. And the developers of this game actually have a bunch of sanctioned mods that you can use. Uh, that be, yeah, are just quality of life stuff, like these hit markers. Oh, that's a patrol coming up. Okay. Oh, no, you don't. Are these cultists, or are they actually warriors of uh, chaos? Do they look like marauders? Yeah, I think they're both, technically. They're, they're, they're sorcerers, at the very least, are cultists of Nurgle, but... Oh, like, these are cultists of plague from the Skaven. Oh. There we go, ultimate. Uh, so, I can say, if, if the, these marauders were the usual marauders, then they will tower over you. Oh, well, the Chaos Warriors at the very least do. Yeah, like, Norskins and other Chaos tribes are... They're still human, but they are not regular humans. Says they are... Almost twice the height. Ooh. 
I have nothing against. Actually, I do. What well, chaos warriors that get blessed by warriors of chaos that get the wool armored glued to them? Or basically, big as. Uh, almost 3 4 meters tall. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There, there have been liberties taken with this game because. Uh, yeah. In normal Warhammer game uh, gaming, storm vermin wouldn't really be that dangerous, so they'd be more comparable to well any other faction standard soldier uh, class. But for this one, they made them like elites <laughs> that are they, they can be very elites. very dangerous. They are the elites. The clan ranks are the fruit shoulders, the slave as the lowest, and right, the storm vermins are the elites. Yeah, but even their elites would be, com from what I've heard at least, would be comparable only to the standard soldiers of uh, any other faction. But in here they've been buffed for that, <laughs> so... Well, they have better morale and also it can also depend on who is leading them. Like, some storm vermins, depending on the clan, are very crazy and, ex and on... Unusually for Skaven, extremely loyal. This is a extreme rarity for Skaven. Probably because they're the only ones or ones of the few that actually get military training. And many don't get nope. training, but so means are basically like if you if a Skaven is bored unusually big and strong and eats all its siblings, it's a snowboarder. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but. What? Yes, people, Skaven or cannibals. Yep. And I thought I drank the potion already, so that was a bit of a waste. Oh. And yeah, those leech uh, witches or wizards, whatever they're, they're specifically called, I don't actually know. Uh, they're basically like the uh, smokers from Left 4 Dead. And Left 4 Dead doesn't really have anything specifically comparable for the storm vermin or the plague amongst but uh, yeah to give a bit more about the character i'm playing uh, the grill knight typically you'd have uh, as a character you'd have a melee weapon and a ranged weapon the grill knight is one of three classes that were career parts that uh, only brings melee weapons to the field um, yeah, as you as you were able to see with that rat ogre, the special and well, really with the storm vermin, uh, the ultimate ability, which is activated by F, and the purple bar at the bottom shows how far that is on its cooldown and such. And that is a big, uh, that's a very <laughs> damaging stab uh, with a summon blade. At the moment, I'm carrying one of these Skaven Tomes, which apparently <laughs> they, <coughs> they had the bot that uh, I inhe the, whose place I took, uh, they had to pick it up. It, it doesn't really do anything here, but if we manage to carry this to the end of the level, it'll give us some extra experience. And beyond that, there are two other... Uh, item slots that could be filled up one for potions or a grimoire which we are actually very close to one very easy to get actually usually you have to go through a bit of a puzzle to get to uh, grimoires and the last one would be bombs Oop. and yeah that's a fine it's a rat with the flamethrower wolf fire <laughs> yeah Okay. Oop. Yeah, just let's just deal with these rats first. Oop. That's lamb oil. Basically, a big incendiary grenade that you can carry out. And yeah, this little thing here. If we pull that, it brings that up. And there's the grim war. Well done. The thing about awesome. grim wars is that they they also give experience, but they have the side effect of draining your max health. Oh. That's bad. Yeah, it would be worse than this, but we have uh, 
I have on all of my characters with this, I have uh, Curse Resistance equipped, which lowers the amount that gets drained. Also, I probably should have healed up there. Uh, yep. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody is just I talk about that, someone else heals me. <laughs> and also, as I noticed something you did earlier. Hmm? You swung your mace and obliterated a Skaven Slay's hand, so he dropped his weapon and was handless. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he just he just outright died from it. <laughs> but he mo probably did. So he, yeah. Since the dire came forth and finished the job. Oh, Hackmaster. Yeah, it's sort of like a... No, not really a hunter. More like a jockey. But, yeah, uh, uh, enemy eviscerations typically happen only when they die or after they have been killed. Then you can just chop them off to a certain degree. <laughs> Packmaster, okay, this is weird. For If there's a Packmaster, there's usually rat ogres, r wolf rats, brood mothers. You, you could see it there for a moment. That one got his freaking head sliced off. <laughs> or pounded in. Okay. No need for the ammo. Oh. Is, is there brood horrors in this game? No, but there are chaos spawns. Oh, hello there. But brood horror or whatever they call it are... Elephant-sized mole rats. <laughs> okay, yeah, we, there's not enough those in here. These are sometimes used as mounts by the Skaven. Oop. Usually by the high-ranked ones. There we go. <laughs> Got ahead of him. And, uh, yeah. The, with the Grill Knight, I have these a sort of mace equipped, which is just quick attacks. Deals pretty good damage, not very much on the defensive end with the shields. Oops. For that, I have the sword and shields. Actually, the Bretonian variant of them. Which is one of the weapons that gets unlocked when you buy the uh, Real Knight DLC. Okay. Uh oh. Okay, just gotta trust them to keep us safe. And oop. there we go. Two down. More to come. Those were war fight throwers or war clubs. Nah, not so sure. Oop. Oh, war clubs. Oh. Those are war clubs. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun one streaming one... this game in full with uh, a uh, somewhat Warhammer veteran along. Yes, those are basically Skaven's version of trebuchet catapults hybrid. They just flung uh, stinky stuff. Yeah. You can actually get hit by that here. Yeah, well, and they have a weapon that's, but... yeah, they have a weapon that's more dangerous. The warp lightning cannon. Yeah, there's only one thing in this game that uses warp lightning. And it's the final boss. Oh, because the final boss is a Grey Seer. Of course. Okay. They're getting the cannonball. Yeah, uh, here's the thing with skin weapons. They are known to be very dangerous. Especially and to the skin in themselves. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, uh, that was the was going to be the drawback. Like, they are more sort of stealing technology and such, and do them more dangerous, but... Skaven's concept of... Uh, how to say this? Security. Quality assurance. And quality assurance is unknown to them. Yeah, they, they can just breed more. Yeah, like, there's a chance if it devastates your troops or even hire their own, but they don't care. If, Which to me also... just means that if I ever did get into the physical wargaming version of Warhammer, I'd go for Skaven just for the freaking fun of it. Yeah, this is the case of... Uh... 
yeah, that, that if you fire an artillery, there's a good chance you might accidentally blow up your own troops but along with the enemy. But that's just part of the game in, in that moment. Yeah, fall damage. Uh, but they don't care if they kill their own, as long as they kill the enemy. Yeah, because well, the Skaven can easily breed a lot more of them. <laughs> Where's the way up to this? Oh, never but mind. They the guy died. Don't care about each other. Like, if they win, they leave the ticks all the glory. If they lose, yeah, Everyone they gets leave the troops. Okay, last one. I kind of happy we don't have realistic cannon sound in this game. Yeah, because then we'd be having some ringing in the ears. Yeah, like, sure, that's only realistic. Normally, it's that's what you hear if you're far away from it. Yep. And, yeah, like in Left 4 Dead, if a character dies, you can find them along the way. Though, unlike in usual cases, with Left 4 Dead, you don't have to get them out of the closet or something. They can just be tied up anywhere. Wait, what? And, yeah, we broke the seeds. Okay, he has some fancy weapon skins. Looks like runic hammers. And I, and the, I like the, the thing I like with dwarves and one way is if they all like regular dwarf warriors just have shame me or wanted helmets and all that, but if they are high rank, they skip the horns and all that unnecessary fashion. They just take practical armor, they pr more practical weapons even, and I kind of like that. Do they still mm. have some oddities like that? Anvil helmet. I, I I don't get that helmet. It looks so uncomfortable. <laughs> well, if he needs to make repairs to his weapons, he has one along the way. Well, that way he needs to do a headbot. That then I'm worried he might get stuck. Mm. And yeah, <laughs> the max level that you can bring a character is level 35 oh. with this well, no. every time you, every, every time you fill up the bar again you get uh, one of those special lock boxes or call it good quality lock boxes and yeah at the end we also get all of the stuff we've collected gets added up for another loot chest another loot box because you can't buy these i i, I made a misread again so uh, so, I thought it said at first, she's retrieved. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> uh, okay, even though I jumped in halfway, I got the most kills, and yeah, the bot doesn't count. <laughs> Total kills, special... never mind. That's actually one of... Typically, you have to wait there for the timer to go down, because a lot of people don't press the return to keep button. Let's see. We finish up a collect, you know, a weekly challenge to get ten ravaged art, which was the, the the scroll that we picked up, and something else. Oh, a challenge: heroes, Kruber, slay a thousand weapons with Marcus Kruber's mace and sword weapon. That's actually also something I was working towards. That gives us a skin, which we can apply here. Okay. Then. That's a bit of a curious maze. <laughs> well, it definitely counts as a maze, even though we... Oh, bloody heck. It does look painful. So I would probably add two more skulls. I don't know why people are lazy with mazes like that, but do, that that was almost more like a club. Uh, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah, inspect weapon. Oh. Into the nest. Yeah, that's going to be a boss fight one. Uh, I should bring something that's armor piercing for that. Like this great hammer here. Also, the curse resistance is on... Actually, is it on this? Yes, curse resistance 32%. Otherwise, it would take 30% uh, of your health, maximum health, I believe. That hammer looks like it was inspired by Galma Ras. Seems a good idea. I agreed. The Warhammer <laughs> of Sigmar. 
good chance of that. Let's actually see what this skin is called. Uh, Fog Slug. And we have well, pressure. it's definitely an Imperial weapon by that name. Yeah. And we're not uh, be surprised if it's a weapon of the warrior priest of Sigmar. And we, there's actually a class that we can pay and take if wanted. Well, let's stick with the Grail Knight for the moment and wait on the bloody dwarf to get moving. <laughs> okay, switch class to the Ranger. It's, well, it's a bit more range <laughs> focused. <laughs> uh. Run! Well, Runic armor to that! Down into the caves of Kerak Knoll to give a rat man warlord a fatal kicking. Nice Oop, don't have the community nice challenge was passed. Hasn't been a dwarf down there for ages, worse luck, and the halls are infested with Skaven. Still, it would be nice to be going after the boss for a change. Officers are all the same, pointy ears and twitching tails all known. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, can, you can actually get differing uh, intro bits like this. Like, half the fun in this game is just all of the different voice lines. And I, I'm, I've i played this game for over 100 hours now, and I still haven't heard a, every one of them. That, that's quite a lot. Again, uh, actually, give me a moment to lower this a bit. I am noticing some stutterings on the stream. Okay, not all of those could be... Flights, but oh well. 90 FPS, yeah, that's a uh, that's a lot better. That should help run things smoothly. We'll break our way through. This way. And yeah, weapons have a bit more reach than you'd actually think. Tip, uh, you typically have in me well melee focused games like this, especially first person ones. And uh, I, it's I, I, <laughs> okay, go on. Okay, already we get set. <laughs> we get a horde on us. But yeah, re weapon reach is a bit of a hidden stat that doesn't actually have any specific. Uh, yes, weapon. Different weapons can reach further away than others. I don't really. There's nothing in the game that to basically tell what a weapon's reach is. Or might be, uh, but the the community has figured out some yeah, weapons that do have longer reach. Of course, spears ha generally do have it over other shorter weapons. And <laughs> you just <kill> <laughs> I accidentally killed one of the assassins. But yeah, that's the that's this game's equivalent of a Left 4 Dead's hunter. An assassin, you kill it. But I think might have been a warlock engineer. <laughs> and also apparently doesn't really know the meaning of stealth because they get they announce themselves quite loudly. Oops, speaking of loudly, that announces a horde. But that must have been amateur for the The assassins are known to be damn sneaky. Yeah, well, not in this game. It. Where are they coming from? There are some of them. Probably also yeah, some uh, behind. I'd say I like the dwarven architecture here. <laughs> yeah, the map work is quite good. Okay. Move metal and stonework. You flog an entire scaven with those may swing. Like a baseball but against a ball. Yep. But half the fun is just this being. Oh, the fuck was put the dwarf there? He was like a miniature whirlwind there. Uh, yeah, this, this game is in general just a lot of fun. Yeah, it was on sale recently, and I tried to get some extra copies to hand out later, but apparently you can't store up extra copies like that in your Steam inventory for some reason. Oh. I know you. You can hold. You can hold 
extra game copies in your inventory, but oh. Uh, but apparently you can't buy them directly, or at least not as a a, a normal uh, a normal customer. Oop, more of these. And yeah, the dwarf got one of the Grim Wars. That's hidden over there. And yeah, that was a very loud assassin. <laughs> and yeah, just like the hunters, they can leap, but uh, the physics in this game can be a, can get a bit wonky if they die in midair. Like they will just they will just shoot off like a freaking rocket. Like this game you hit earlier with the maze. <laughs> Died mid air, you but shoot. Hey, we'll see some more flying when I use this bit. Dunk. I don't actually know if moving like this extends a web uh, an attack range or not, but I like doing it all the same. Hello there. And yeah, that shield means that the attack has no effect. Okay, they just disappeared. And that's a storm fiend that's coming up. <laughs> Dear. Mark it. Come on, let me get in position. Okay, the hell do you have going on that you can just make enemies disappear, Worf? No, he ha apparently he does question mark as well. So he may not be the one doing it. Yep. Yeah, we've seen those gas clouds before. That's from a, a grenadier. That's actually one of yeah, the, one of the things that I killed at the end yeah, at the start of this mission. Yeah. Okay, because it is people that probably should sum up this game quite well. They're monsters of war crime. Yeah, <laughs> basically everything they do is a war crime. Yeah, like they use the rail troops as. Meat shields while using the rest of the weaponry to do as much damage as possible, like the rattling gun, poison wing bombardiers, warp fire throwers, and all that. Yep, and they do not give a fuck if they <laughs> are caught in the line of fire. Yeah, especially if you slay rats. Like, this is horrible. The, the Skaven are not a nice people. I think one of the rats got launched up there for a bit. <laughs> and I just got a lot of ragdolls. And sounds like Saltspire found it. <clears throat> found a bomb. There we go. Yeah, the hammer is, of course, a lot more damage on a single attack. Which makes it very good for that. Just <laughs> introducing the back of their neck to the back of their colon. Lancaster? What? I'm uh, not familiar fire. with that term. Oh. And I hear a Packmaster behind us. Uh, not the best time, Dwarf. Yeah. Pack Masters can be very annoying when someone is staying behind. <clears throat> Wait, guess what? Is there a help hip ab abomination in this game? Uh, there's the Chaos Wastes. Uh, help hip abomination is basically. A Titan version of uh, a Skaven, uh, Frankenstein Skaven monster, basically. Uh, that not, no. We do have Chaos Spawns. <laughs> Probably the yeah, they, closest they thing. It's, it's more like... How to say, it's like a Yite Mulrat 
that walks on four legs but has a front part, basically like a rat centaur, just massive as heck. They sometimes have a wheel in the pelvis for easy mobility. Okay, that's certainly a new one. And sometimes I have war crystals as fist weapons, and sometimes if they die, they explode or explode into a swarm of skaven. Like, it, it is... It is, as it says, an abomination. Yep. Yeah. Oh, someone, someone got pinned by an assassin there. Though I guess it would be unfair to use those in this game due to how big they are. Yep. They're basically the biggest dragons. They're basically this game is also to counter dragons. So okay. I agree. And uh, yeah, as you can see, they these uh, slave rats, they are easy to deal with, but their whole thing is to oh, <laughs> is to surround and overwhelm you. Oh dear. There we go. <laughs> it's nothing to get rid of a bunch of scape and just blowing yourself up. Nice doors. <laughs> yes, okay. And randomly, imagine you play Minecraft with a Warhammer mod. <laughs> that would be, uh, yeah, something. Actually, there, there probably is a, Mine a Warhammer mod out there somewhere. <laughs> there is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, as the character, she just said it. Skaven or extremely many. Yeah. And yet they are a secret for many nations. Like, the Empire works hard to make sure the, the populace do not know that Skaven exists. Probably because if they did know, it leads to mass panic all over the place. Yeah, and they, they have fought skins before in the past, but the skin were pretty good at covering up afterward. And only a few rem me remembers it and try to keep it as secret as possible. For they started the plague back then. Oops, speaking of. <laughs> Drama Queen. Did you hear that? Rattling gunner. Oh. Okay, yeah, that is one of the easiest way to identify what is coming because the characters will not shut up about anything that might be on approach. Other times, oop. other times you have to rely on the noises they make, like rattling gunners. It sounds like someone is jingling a bunch of uh, coins around in a bag. Okay. <laughs> oop. Oop. And that's what happens when it, I, I don't actually know what causes that to happen with global deers. Uh, something sets them aflame or something, and they basically just go for a suicide bomb. That's what uh, oh, some of their gear haywires. There we go. Yeah, the Grill Knights works very good as a monster slayer. But they do slay a lot of monsters for. Basically. To get a Grey Knight, you have a need to have a Knight that finishes qu uh, Grail quest and is rewarded to become a Grey Knight. So yeah, a Grey Knight is not just a simple elite soldier, they are THE elite soldiers of Bretonia. Uh, I, I think I recall one bit n uh, that Marcus said about how the hell he became a grill knight in that he doesn't actually fucking remember how he did so he probably was fucking drunk through the entire time okay i think that's more of the developers just hand waved it away so they are not serious about him being a great knight then so it's probably not canon 
Uh, seeing as you can swap between four completely different uh, lifetime careers in the, for each character, well, except for Sienna. Uh, yeah, they don't really go with things being too canon. Like, I, I see they do a lot of lore things, but the character themselves probably have some limits. Yeah, they, they, if they were to stick too tightly to the lore, uh, it would, uh, yeah, it would constrict the fun of the game. No, when it comes to Greyhound, nope. I think it would be probably be better if they just made a new character that was Bretonian, then they could use more uh, Bretonian oh, classes. Yeah, no. the AI isn't always too smart about where they jump in. Yeah, no, the, here's the sad thing about Bretonia. Even before the end times, Bretonia's law and unit roster had not been upgraded since 6th edition, and they ended at 8. Okay, Oop. So they, they were basically almost abandoned by uh, Game Workshop early on. This kind of made many sad for... It was a fun faction, probably is... It obviously needed updates. They just never did it. Yeah, from all I've heard, Games Workshop isn't the smartest when, well, keeping their own stuff alive. Yeah, like, they have some good Lord of Writers and all that, but at but the end of the day, it's not the Lord of Writers' job to keep it alive. It's usually the, the ones on top who decides, and they... I, I suspect that many one that wrote the lore and were preparing to move to Cafe Inn and all that. They were probably pissed off that they, oh, we had to rewrite it all now to make a new story called Age of Sigma. Uh, okay. Kind of like that. Like that the top hundreds got so... Instead of following what people wanted about exploring the rest of the world, they just, no, we, we blow up the world instead. Yeah, and that better is hope they don't off. do the same with 40k then, because that's going to really piss people off. Uh, I think there's always some drama there, but not in that manner, at least, uh, at least to my knowledge. And somebody stuck behind and got grabbed again. Oh dear. Oh, there we go. <laughs> right into the wall. But yeah, I, I'm glad that they're all reviving Warhammer Fantasy as the old world and taking set like 100 years before the end times. And they all do what the plants wanted to begin with. The rest of the world. It took okay. them a while to realize that they made a mistake. Oop. Typically the Packmasters try to hide, but okay. Oh, Globadier. Donk, donk. <laughs> okay, we haven't actually seen the most disruptive enemy types yet, but that might be because it's one of the Chaos units. And yeah, we're in <laughs> deep in the bowels of our rat nest. Of course, there's not going to be many Chaos enemies. Yeah, uh, bloody heck. There's so many rat bones. But uh, there's many three things that could reason why there are many rat bones here. Either type of experimentation, but or probably also even eaten by their own comrades. Before or after that died. And yeah, here's the boss we're after. Hello. Yep. Oh, that goodbye. Looks like, that's a warlord. <laughs> okay, yeah, warlords get big, but what the heck just happened? Uh, I managed to accidentally instant kill it with my special. Accidentally? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't expect it to do that much damage. Like, the bosses should have more health than the monsters that we encounter, like the rat ogres and such. Is that crit damage? Uh, yeah, it, we might have accidentally just created him to death instantly. Oh, you have that the Varland objective achievement? That's some. Okay, that's one of the achievements. 
It must be one of the achievements. And mm -hmm. yeah, after this, there's basically nothing. Only a bit of father to keep you busy on your way out. This looks like... Uh, is this giving you inspiration for Minecraft uh, at some point? Yeah, we could try and emulate some of this. Like beams like that, running through places. Yeah, it would be easy and still Dwarvish style. Like, some things we probably can't do, like they will uh, crisscross patterns. Like, good and luck. I believe that's where we were looking at, was where we actually started there. You went the entire circle. Yep. Yeah. With that, I mean, we could just take in the back door to kill him. <laughs> yeah, if they had a, a 20 meter ladder, probably. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, heroes alive, tomes collected, Brim Wars, and coll collected loot dice, which you can find randomly, rarely. Or mostly they just drop from monsters and, uh, yeah, other bosses. Okay, soldier's coffer. Okay, there is one more stage after general's coffer here, which is emperor's. Uh, which you, yeah, you can only really get if you do a quick play on, the, well, and get all of the stuff. Let's see. Specials killed, elites killed, range kills, melee kills, damage dealt, damage to monsters, damage taken, headshots, saves and revives. Saves is uh, if someone gets pinned down, or I think. Uh, no, then the, someone was pinned down. Hmm. Must be revive after they've died and such then. <clears throat> Possibly. Okay, let's have a look at this. Okay, we have a few of these. Let's open them up. Okay, some blues, some greens. Let's see. This symbol over here in the corner, that means that it has an illusion on it. A, which is a weapon skin. And I might as well show what happens if you open one. Which is why I, I ne almost never open one. The... Sorry, someone uh, came home from one week at Sweden Rock. Okay. I had to tell to not shout my real name. <laughs> I'll show another one then. But yeah. You need to click them to open, but the, the color shows what, well, rarity of item it is. It's the standard stuff. Uh, you, you have white, green, blue, orange, and then red as the highest rarity. Which is called the veteran rarity. Now, let's see, what was that challenge request? It's not it. Okay, it must be something that. Okay, it must. We already must have had that. Uh, uh, I already mu must have already had that quest uh, or achievement done, Seems but somebody else didn't. Uh, it's not actually. Come on, think you were indecisive but you ain't sure any longer loner being a jackass that's what he said that's one of the lines he says if you go into his shop and don't buy anything <laughs> now though let's start up another and i'm gonna throw some food into the machine Maybe, but this wasn't no ghost. It was our elf. Gorillion never heard a sing. She saved her voice for insults. Oh, it was definitely her. <laughs> I believe you, Manwing. Just as I believe that it'd probably be unwise to confront her about it. And here I thought she'd be all sunshine and beaming, just like she always Oh, dear. <laughs> and yeah, like they have like hundreds of lines for the missions themselves, they also have a few dozen in the keep, depending on what characters are around and such, and which of them aren't. Okay, actually, let me swap out to something else with this. 
Um, we have the great hammer, so let's use one of the shields and swords again. Actually, let's just bring two big hand weapons. <laughs> Go, it can't. Okay. It couldn't find anything, anyone to quickly join, so it started a hosted game, and now someone is joining. <laughs> but, yeah. With each weapon, or at least each melee weapon, you can just go for light attacks like this, or heavy attacks like that. You can even chain them together for a certain. You know, for a certain amount. There's not no official combat or combo system, but there are some tricks you can do to yeah have more have more direct or sweeping attacks go come out. And I'm I'm back. Welcome back. And here. And plenty of farmers too. Can't be a chaos worshiping scum without a good ritual, can you? Well, we're gonna get the poor buggers back, whatever it takes. The British humor in this. <laughs> mm. But yeah, like you know, Loner you know, is the one who typically does the uh, the intro bits. He, he has a few different ones at that. Uh, but since the last patch, which was a bit ago now, 4.6, 4.7 is going to launch in a few days on the 14th. And it is the 11th, I think. No, the 12th. And that's a loot rat. God, he's too fast for me to catch up. Huh? There we go. Yep, come on, kill steal. He, they they drop random stuff, from bombs to medicine, sometimes loot dice. So yeah, you want to kill them, but you shouldn't chase after them too far. And yeah, that's a beast of gore. Yeah, let's see, how, how is it ranks now? Angor, Gore, and Bestigore. And of course, there was also Minotaurs and Centigores. Yeah, there's Minotaurs, but the last is not so far. Oh. Uh, Centigore is basically a mutated goat centaur. <laughs> yes, they are very fast. Though they're also odd, like the basemen are known as the Cloven one. So, for some reason, they gave Centigores, and this is an addition, but looks like a hybrid between hoof and claws in one just looks odd. Okay. Makes you wonder why, why of all beastmen did they choose to give the Centigores horse legs with claws instead of hoofs, or cloven hoofs at least? Okay. And what I did with that one that you know, got the, <laughs> the drop on me there, it was uh, that I, ma I managed to accidentally time my block to parry the attack instead. I think it, it didn't cost any stamina, so I think it was a parry. But yeah, you have only a very small window to parry in. Oh, that sounds like a spawn. And I actually have a mod installed that has the no, that should have the stamina shields flash green during the oop parry window. Ow! Yep. There we go. Get that. Now where is that globadier? Oh, there it is. It's a thing about chaos spawn. They used to be people. Yeah. Oop. They're basically the extreme version of chaos mutation. They were the bit rounded. Nothing but layers of scars. The reason I did that was because up here is one of the tomes. And with that, Here's we also thing. completed one of the quests, it seems. Well done. But, let's see. Beastmen and humans uh, can turn into this Chaos Spawn. I don't think... Uh, I think almost anything can turn into Chaos Spawn. 
Yeah, it should be expected since they are an amalgamation of basically just about anything. But yeah, another thing that the yeah. Grill Knight has has the it's is those quests on the right side of the screen. You simply okay. just complete them and you'll get extra bonuses and such like uh, health regen, attack speed, extra power to your attacks, or extra damage. Alright, nice. Okay, this this Karelian is running as the Sister of the Thorn, which is called the Elf's Premium Career. Uh, well, this should be easy to identify. Slayer! <laughs> and yeah, the, the bot is running as uh, the Witch Hunter Captain. You can be sure that if the Northlanders are taking slaves, Okay, there. Oh, Flanders. Potion. Probably means Norskans. Yep, and that's a lot of them. Uh, the potions, uh, purple ones. Uh, purple ones up your cooldown reduction by a ton. Typically enough to have you use your power at least once, depending on the cool the normal cooldown. Uh, the real night is about thirty seconds. So yeah, you'll be able to get a lot, a lot of stabs with that. The blue ones are speed potions, which well give movement and attack speed bonus. And the orange one is a strength potion, and yeah, that should that should speak for itself. More damage. I think on both These... range and melee attacks for some reason. Look, there was many cultists just laying down. Some of them look almost like poxwalkers. That's a uh, yeah, life stealer. <laughs> they can be really annoying because they teleport close to you and then grab you. And yeah, then you're stuck unless they get killed. But yeah, since they announce themselves pretty easily and you can actually dodge their attack, which I'm doing with shift at the moment, normally it would be bound to the same as jump. But yeah, they, <clears throat> the game tends to get them one, get them confused on what you'd want to do, to jump or to dodge. So it's a good idea to separate those buttons. Yeah, someone found the Grim War. I don't actually know where that one is. The Grim Wars and Tomes always spawn in the same locations. Other items can just be randomly anywhere else. No, another horde coming. So let's just grab the key that we need and get into position. <laughs> Heads go flying. Yep. And it seems yep, those should jump down. Yeah, the second Grim War is up over there. It's the highlighted item at the moment, or <laughs> right as I right as I said that it unhighlights. Uh, yeah, I'm not dropping my potion for that just yet. Because Yeah, there's always a, bo a monster that spawns here when you open up the gates here. Okay, now I'll go get the <laughs> now I'll go get the tome for the Grim War, and I can hear something. I'm not sure if that's a wit, if that's a life stealer, a, a leech, or oh no, it's a it's a blight stormer. Uh, those I'm not familiar with. Yep. Okay, just fart away. Uh, what they do is they basically summon up a storm. 
That is very disruptive because it, it can also steer it around. Ooh. And yeah, if you get caught in it, you get swung around for a while. I was, for, I was certain it was going to grab me there, and then I would have been dead because everyone all already went down the ledge. Someone want a bit of gardening? Yeah, I gotta feed the fields with blood. And well, it, it also helps if we can trim these down to size a bit. I'm pretty sure those arrows you see flying around every now and then are from the elf here, which means that she has one of the uh, elder wood staffs, I believe they're called, or deep wood staffs. I'm a bit surprised she hasn't been using this secondary effect of that for a while because that lifts enemies up into the air. <laughs> if that is what they're. Yes, they are using it. And yeah, other tome over that way. I think we missed one. Because we're getting close to the finale of this mission. We've a leech by the sound of it. You call yourself checking my food. Oh, be beast of gore. I heard the leech. <laughs> okay, it's trying to get an angle on us, but it just keeps vanishing. Okay. Oop. And there we go. I should actually keep a lookout if, if they manage to grab you, if they start dealing damage immediately, or only if they manage to drag you towards them. There's a chaos warrior near. Go heal up a bit. <laughs> Slayer gonna slay. And be ham. Potion of, uh, once you have a Grim War equipped, you can't actually drop it anymore or change it for anything else. Well, you can throw it away, but it, that, that will heal you and your teammates for, for the amount of health lost. But you also can't pick it up again. It's get it gets destroyed. Screaming, that one's mine. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> I'm feeling a lot of the money on this game went to the voice acting. Yep. <laughs> like, a lot they, of it is they... also going to dark, uh, to dark Tide's voice acting. From what I've heard, they've already got like uh, thousands of lines ready for that game. What the heck? Like, they, they don't need to, but it's so nice they did for... It kind of keeps the game more alive in a way. Yeah, it, it makes it feel fresh when you're not hearing the same two lines over and over again. Exactly. Plus, people actually go to look for the different voice lines that are possible. I hear a Packmaster somewhere. Yep, there we go. That rattling is very noticeable. Hello. 
norm normally people would be shooting at that pack master to try and free their ally but in the higher difficulties of champion and above that's a bad idea because their ranged <laughs> attacks have friendly fire melee attacks never will friendly fire but yeah it's just a good idea to try and get into a habit to not try and shoot your ally as they're being dragged off to, to be hung <laughs> Okay. Yeah, PS has been dipping again. Now it's about 30. It was 90 earlier. Probably because, well, all of the freaking rats and chaos on <laughs> in the that the world has to calculate for us now as well. Oh, we missed one. Can't progress if the all of them and the yeah, all of the prisoners haven't been freed. Okay, that was a rare occasion where the text and the lines don't actually match, and bye-bye. And, yeah, you can do a little skip there by jumping to that corner to get to these too early, but there's still two more downstairs. So, yeah, I'll just... I'll just aggro along a bunch of these, so that should make it a bit easier for the other three. Okay. <laughs> break his insides and then break his legs. Yeah, you do. At hammer like that, you do not want to get hit in the stomach. Or the head. Okay. Uh, one little thing I should add about the special with the grill that I have now is that I have a talent equipped that uh, enhances it. Normally it would be only one slash there. The second is because of, well, the talent. I'll, I'll show that when we're back in the keep. Uh, where is everyone? There's the witch hunter. I heard the dwarf. There. And yeah, the elf, of course, is the first to run off. Okay, there we go. There wasn't really a need to do that, because the moment we're in here, we're safe. I don't think I've ever seen an enemy get into the circle. That, there's your proof. <laughs> hmm. Against the grain. And there we go. Another mission finished. All four heroes alive. Both of the Grim Wars. Not all of the tomes, though. So, yeah, a level in another commendation. Another thing I should note is that currently there's a double experience weekend. Go not weekend, but currently everyone is getting double experience from the level. So that 1600 would normally be 800 experience. Now, let's see. Almost... Reynolds' gift is random, how much it gives. So, there we go, yeah, an Emperor's Coffer. <laughs> Sometimes it can only give, like, a, a centimeter of progress, otherwise it, it'll fill in a full bar. Okay, this time the bot was counted, because we didn't have somebody drop out, I think. And, yeah, the higher grade a chest is... The bigger chance you have of rarer stuff, of course. So let's have a look with this Renaud. one. If I remember right, I might be wrong. Renault is the god of gambling, basically. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, what difficulty you are playing on also has an effect. The brief, you have the prefix of it with the merchants or soldiers, you know, <clears throat> generals or emperor's chests. Uh, but if you play on 
if you play on recruit, you get only a, a box. A veteran gives these lock box, gives the normal chests, and I believe everything above that. I haven't really managed to finish many of these, or actually, I've not managed to finish any missions on these two. Only one on champion. Uh, they give you, well, the lock boxes and such, with a bigger chance to get rarer stuff. Let's actually open this up. I don't really. I think I got that from a one of the achievements. Uh, yeah, a bunch of nothing. It actually says in the uh, <clears throat> in the corner here, chest exists with six different tiers for each difficulty level. Each tier increases the chance of receiving items of higher qualities and power. The chest guarantee at least one equipment item. Uh, please note that opening chest will generate loot for your currently selected hero displayed above. <clears throat> Though I don't think I've ever seen them drop. Uh, <clears throat> okay, that's just a repeat line. I don't think I've seen them uh, give any stuff that is outside of the base game's uh, equipment. So I haven't seen them drop any Bretonian long swords or swords and shields or any other stuff you could but you know, that came with DLCs. But you can still craft those. Which is done by just doing this and that. Oh dear. Uh, and it, before I forget, did you hear someone call call me on my head earlier? Uh, nope. <laughs> you only heard me. Yep. Good. Just having to make sure. And yeah, here are the. Oh. Here are the talents, which you could consider a skill tree. You can freely change between these once you have reached the level required. And up to 30, they, they unlock stuff. On the 30, it's typically... Uh, it it adds a change to your ultimate, which is, well, Virtue or Audacity. Adds a second stamp. You could also change this Blessed Blade to a horizontal slash that cleaves through and staggers multiple enemies. So you could... You could change it to, well, deal more single damage, or to possibly two targets, or have it become a, a, <clears throat> a horde clearer. Or stuff like this, where it increases movement speed, though that isn't really too useful, I'd say, personally. Others, maybe not so. And also, you can't access your equipment and stuff whilst in the uh, teleport, or, or the Bridge of Shadows, as it's called. There's a sorcerer causing trouble down in Helmgard. Yep, another I'm boss level. Pretty sure Lona makes these things up anyway. Whatever the bugger calls himself, apparently he's whipping up a toxic mist to drown the whole city. Which means me and mine get to play hide the pointy implement with his rotten hide until he takes no for an answer. <laughs> Gruber. <sighs> I forget his poor first name, but I know the second name of this boss at the end that's waiting for us here is Hail Scorch, at the very least, because it's also the name of the level. Just close up and don't get separated. Here. They'll be over us before you know it. A blessed shot. Okay. T typically charge attacks like this. Uh, would release on their own, but with some weapons, like the Bretonian Longsword, you can hold them as long as you want, but you do move slower. Okay, that's one turn around real quick. And, yeah, the, the parry indicator is back. It, it just seems to randomly turn off every now and then. I don't know why. Maybe it's because the parry window is different with different weapons. I'm not too sure. Pick up the pace, mates. We need to get down there. Maybe a decapitation. Right, oh, okay, I went silent there. Oh, there, is, there it is. There it is. Somewhere over there. Yep, there's the blight storm. If if he had lived, that would have formed into a full yeah uh, into a full storm. And yeah, I already said what that does. It moves around, picks you up, and throws you away. 
And if you get caught in a bad spot with that, it can of course throw you over a ledge. Okay, we've seen him a few times now, but since Barden brought it up, yeah, some enemies carry shields. Uh, some weapons can break shields, but normally you'd have to attack them a few times to break their guards before you can damage them. They can be really annoying, especially if it's a, ver a storm vermin with a shield, because then you have to deal with them being armored as well. And yeah, armored enemies, of course, don't have, well, armored areas where they just don't take attacks from weapons unless they are armor piercing or just deal a lot of damage. So typically you have to aim for the head and such. Or, well, at least you have a hammer. Yep, yeah, or bring something armor piercing. A hammer? That hammer should count as armor piercing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Especially since it has that. A, a crow beak. Did you just. <laughs> I welcome the welcoming party with a bomb. No, no. Did you just throw a holy hand grenade? <laughs> Sort of. Oh, I didn't actually see the second one there. <laughs> that was a lucky break. But I'm pretty sure that was a, a Chaos Patrol that we accidentally intercepted. Uh, yeah, patrols are basically just... Usually they're Storm Vermin or Chaos Warriors with their entourage. That are, yeah, patrolling through an area. You can avoid them, but sometimes you can get into crappy luck and meet them right at a choke point. Oh. Yeah, let the, let the Slayer dive into the firing line. <laughs> if I had a shield steal, I could have blocked that, but yeah, no shield, no block. Up. Another gas rat. Yeah, sometimes the enemy, sometimes the enemy specials seem to uh, spawn into in pairs. <laughs> Almost. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a way down. <laughs> Maybe not look down. <laughs> and I believe this is supposed to be what happens when. Uh, a Skaven Undercity decides it's uh, not going to be under anymore. Or under Hive, I don't know the terms. <laughs> hmm. And yeah, of course the enemies can jump better than us, <laughs> so they can get across gaps like that. It still leaves them vulnerable. Come on, cultist! Here we go. Oh, and we have... Yep, I completely missed the second one, and... Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah... Enemies are just as vulnerable to getting knocked into places that would kill you as, uh, well, you. I forgot to tag that one. <coughs> what the? Oh, I'll be taking that and that, thank you. I can still give these away, if needed. Because they are degenerates to a man. Born only so they may be scourged by the righteous. Funny sort of life, that. I feel as though the whole cliff might yet give way. Yeah, watch your footing. <laughs> I know where Grimoire is hidden here, but I'd rather not try to take on a boss with one. Or at least I'd rather also not nope, exchange my potion. Oop. 
And that was both the Slayer and the Elf using their special at the same time, trying to kill the same target. <laughs> Be a bit careful before I jump off the ledge. Yeah, please don't jump off the ledge. Thank you. Yeah, the, the thing with bringing tomes is that, if, yeah, if you're carrying one, you can you can of course not carry around any medicine. And um, hello there in the chat, to Atreus. Yeah. Atreus. They're yeah, doing pretty well, I'd say. We were planning on doing a Minecraft stream today, uh, as we well as part of the chain schedule. But uh, yeah, the server I'd be on is uh, sort of having some d connection issues apparently because it teleported us into Deep Slate multiple times and just otherwise disconnected. So yeah, instead <laughs> we're doing Vermintide. And how are you doing yourself, if I may ask? Nope. Okay, they got that one quick. And then again, it's a bot, so it has a bit of auto aim and such, so a lot of auto aim. Oh, this is Vermintide. Warhammer fantasy. Yeah, or left for rats. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this case, it's more than just left for rats. Yep. <laughs> okay, Horde of Gone. Let's see, the uh, fantasy left for dead. I haven't played this game, but I'd love the look of it. It is a very good game, a very enjoyable game. Uh, I've put o uh, over 120 hours into it so far, and I'm still f having fun with it. Uh, it was on sale until recently, but it should go on sale pretty reasonably often. And beyond that, I think it costs only 30 or 20 at basic. And I think I know now what I'm going to put up as a stream title when we get to streaming these games, yeah, this game and Vermintide 1 for their story bits. Uh. But yeah, the, the comparison to Left 4 Dead is very apt because there is a lot of comparison to be made. We have specials like the Rattling Gunner there. Oop. And <laughs> a face full of warp fire from the flamethrower special but it also yeah, has no. elite enemies like these chaos warriors yeah a chaos warrior of no gold precisely this one they're basically plague warriors yep so yeah it isn't you can't you can certainly say that uh, this game has inspiration from left for dead but it puts a lot of its own stuff into it as well yeah, they, they, they probably looked at Left 4 Dead and thought, maybe we can do something familiar. And they did something familiar, but with its own, a, a lot of its own flair. Okay, heal up Elf. Or not. Okay, I'll just use this. Grab that. And there we go, the boss is waiting in here. Uh, yeah, Blurple Spew <laughs> Scores is... That's a name you can only find in fantasy. Normally Apes. this Jack guy would be an absolute pain in the ass, but he has one specific weakness. Oh, if you think I'm gonna play nice with you and your blasted ritual, you're lost to oh, Motherfucker. Oh, and of course he teleports away the moment I do my special. 
But yeah, this asshole counts as a counts as a monster type enemy, I believe. Oh, come on, at least I got one hit in. And yeah, he That's does this a... annoying shotgun phantom things that knock back. That's a chaos sorcerer of Nurgle. Yeah. Oh, and now he. You'd think he'd be out of reach, but you could still hit him from underneath here. Oop. That cannot make sense. So Where yeah, this is the way to cheese the motherfucker, because otherwise you'd only be able to hurt him with uh, ranged attacks from there. Oop. And yeah, when he jumps into the middle like that, it's best to stay away because of this. Uh, Salt Spire just <laughs> standing straight up like he don't give a fuck. Bright fantasy? Oh, my friend. Yeah, missed again. There, there's some brightness in Warhammer, but there's also a lot of grim darkness here. Okay, just keep hacking away at his toes. Yeah, normally you'd have to wait quite a long time for him to get back, get down from his purchase like this. Yep. And there he goes again with that big attack. <laughs> the bar Barton completely covered with goo. Stand still. Yep. And of course he does exactly the opposite. We haven't been hit by any of those yet, but they are very nasty because they slow you down and drain away your stamina. But yeah, he's dead. And gone. Bosses always drop their you know, loot dice in the middle of the arena, and now we just need to get the hell out. Now, let's see. I definitely like the bright fantasy setting better than dark cities with zombies. Yeah. <laughs> It's bright only because it's day at the moment. Otherwise, you can hardly call any Warhammer game <laughs> bright fantasy. Because, yeah, this is kind of the... This takes place during this world's apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, like, there are some bright, though, pretty realms. There are Petronia, Ulf One, and all the stuff, but... The Empire has many areas that are also rather not the most pleasant areas. Yeah. Hmm. But again, it also depends on which region of the Empire you are in. Like, the most horrible area you can visit in the Empire probably is Sylvania. And those um. people there don't even know they're part of the Empire. Aren't those the vampires or something? Yeah, that, the vampires are the ones keeping it ignorant. Because they know okay. that they, that will make uh, so much more undead minions. Uh, let's see, looking forward to the Microsoft Bethesda Obsidian showcase in a few hours. I didn't know they had that going today. Uh, I'll, I'll... Probably do... <laughs> it's probably due to the rule constellation of E3 or something. Yeah. Uh, I'll hear afterwards what we'll get out of that. And it seems we had a new player, or at least someone who only now started on the freaking elf. <laughs> oh dear. Um, Leo Plerodon. Hmm? Uh, oh, the name. <laughs> you know what a Leo Plerodon is? Nope. I say walking with dinosaurs. Um, I think a bit of it. Let's actually swap the, out for a moment. It's a giant crocodile-like thing with fins. Okay, swapping it's, over to the wizard. It also been become a meme. Like if you if you believe in Leo Plerodon, you can breathe underwater. <laughs> and yes, it's with those damn unicorns. Shawls and whatever they want called. Mm, nothing too interesting. Okay. Let's double check my stuff here. 
Okay, cooldown reduction and curse. Uh, yeah, your gear can have little <clears throat> little amplifiers like uh, attack speed, more crit damage, more damage against specific targets. And this power here, that did... <clears throat> Pardon? <clears throat> power is determined by your character's level and the, well, the power of the gear they have equipped. It averages out with, uh, yeah, like it says there, power from hero level 350. You get 10 per each level, so you start with 10. And power from equipment, which is, well, all five of these are 300 power. So, yeah, that averages out to 500. <clears throat> and there is a way that you can... Cannot. Not until my penance is done. I must set the weave right. The weave is really that important. The weave is everything. It is a balance that must be preserved. And you did something to upset it. I. Someone did. Hmm. And say, I can guess Warham is beat right compared to Left to Dead. Says he's probably not playing on it. He probably played in during daytime and all that. But there are quite many horrors that probably move worse than Le Left 4 Dead. So. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, as I was saying with power, uh, if I had equipment that was less powerful, so let me just swap that out for a standard bit. It will lower the amount of damage you do as well, because that also... It, hold on a sec. Uh, they're waiting for me. I cannot access play menu. What? Uh, there. Oh, I was pressing the wrong button. Uh, of course, it also doesn't really match up that I picked up different weapon types, since more different weapons deal more damage. But yeah, in general, you want more power on your equipment. Uh, let's see. The Weave? Is this character the Loom Child? I'm uh, not really sure what you mean with that, but the Weave is something that the Elves worship. <clears throat> like uh, the Weave of all existence. Yeah, I'm not familiar with this Weave. I... <clears throat> I should probably look up for... I know more about the Dwarven Gods than the other Gods. Of course, for obvious <laughs> reasons. <laughs> but yeah, if you do quick play in this game, you get uh, a random level selected, but you get also a boost for... <clears throat> a boost on the calculation of your reward chest. I think we can do this mission and then one or two others. Okay, it was a bad reference to the game loom. I actually know that game. I've never played it. I've seen a Let's Play of it, but I know certainly of it. The manor's food stocks will be destroyed, even if I have to do it all myself. We're getting close. If the Baron's alive, he and I shall have serious words. Kill all you can! Win or lose, they won't forget this day. Yeah, each of these characters, well, are certainly a character all their own. <laughs> and I have to say that Sienna is one of my... <laughs> is one of the ones that I like mo or more of the, among them. I would probably say that Fruber is my favorite. Oh. Okay, I actually just set that one off. Last time we played this, you said uh, Bardin and Ciel. Carillion were your favorite? Uh, as a pair, because they like to... They <laughs> There's the whole dwarf and elf stuff, of course. Where, where they, have, they absolutely loathe each other. Well, maybe not loathe, but they definitely, definitely do not like each other. But they are certainly forced to work together through all of this. Down he goes! 
Nope. Nope. Okay, that one thought he was being smart. Or when, didn't yeah, start. <laughs> when the uh, when the kill marker flashes blue, that means that I managed. I basically did an assist, though that the game doesn't actually count anything on that. I need to figure out the specifics of it a bit more because the I can change things a bit, but I I don't know exact. I don't know if it differentiates between crits or not because that's one of the reasons why I installed that mod to see how oh also I'm getting kills with crits and such. Okay. And yeah, since this character is a fire mage, fire is her main thing. Now where is there it yes. is. Does it have some the variations of the bright wizards or fire mm -hmm. wizards or you or even know Nas? So I'm kinda curious which one is this one called? Uh, Sienna has three classes at the moment. She is supposed to still get her fourth and premium career. But her basic, her starting class is Battle Wizard. The second is Pyromancer, and this is Unchained. Wait. Pyromancer? Battle Wizard is a generic term of all wizards serving the Empire in military. A pyromancer is just basically any battle wizard that is a. We're taking the College of Fire, a bright wizard. Well, I'd so say that uh, Sienna is very obviously a fire wizard. Yeah, like there was a bit of fire imitation that happens to some bright wizard. Like, people usually know when someone is a part of the College of Bright. Due to their hair or mustache and beards being on fire constantly, and well, may sometimes accidentally have some accidents. Like, there's an yeah. entire district that they have not re repaired in one of the cities due to the reminder of don't let your magic go out of this control. Yeah, and that's the whole thing with Sienna because she is very much out of control. <laughs> oh dear. Like the whole She is one of the more fun characters, but one thing that people should remember is that the reason she oh uh, the reason she was even uh, joined up with the well she was even near the others was because she was captured by Salt Spire, the witch hunter, Ooh. to stand trial because she basically went on a murder spree. Yes, yeah, she's addicted to her flames. Oop. Oh no, I think... A... A bright wizard that develops... Pyromania? Yep. <laughs> yeah, that... And again, she left the bright... She left the college, and... Okay, yeah, even more reason why he was hunting her. She, she's basically a rogue wizard. Yep. Oop. Somebody this will want that. This is basically something the Empire do not like. Says, yeah, people practice magic, but... It do it wrong and you might even accidentally summon a demon. Yep. But yeah, magic itself is not evil, just... Yeah, demons need magic to manifest in the world. That's a warning so coming, has... so we might as well go into a choke point. So yeah, some humans have some stigma against... Well, at least the Empire has some stigma against magic. Dwarves use rune magic due to its purest form and more controllable, but they are also extremely resistant against magic, but they also... They are very new to, to wizards. Due yeah, to the... Uh, <laughs> hmm? in, mo in most media you don't really hear much of, uh, of uh, dwarven wizards and such. <laughs> yeah, the dwarves can't use magic. Well, 
not normally. The only ones that dwarves that use magic are the Chaos Dwarves, and due to they were not designed to use magic, they have a side effect. Okay. This is slowly turning into stone. <laughs> okay. So the current one of the most powerful Chaos Sorcerer Prophets basically had to make himself to his slaves a steam armored suit due to he has no longer arms or legs. <laughs> so he can't use smart, but he basically goes around a steam tech magic tech thing suit that's bash people's skulls but still causing magic. And when a chaos dwarf turns into full stone, they are put into a temple on display. Here stands the, uh, the numerous dumbasses who use too much magic. Yeah, but I will still reveal it. And here's the little thing. They are still alive. So take that in. Yeah. The oldest statues there are still alive. And this is hence why dwarves, regular dwarves only use rune magic. For yeah. its purified magic, and they use it in rune forms. Yeah, they dwarves uh, love their rock and stone, but not enough to be rock and stone. Yeah. Nope. But they do have some lightning to alchemist, but most of it to well, turning lead to gold, or in some cases turning an orc into a golden statue. Oh yes, that's a thing. <laughs> There's one Alchemist way of dealing with your enemies. <laughs> yeah, all your poor molten metal from the sky. Okay, double check. Nothing in here. But yeah, dwarves are kind of the people that didn't, don't like things to be unpredictable. It's probably why they take centuries before they weaponize one of the inventions. Yep. Basically, a lot of centuries of testing. Yeah. Okay. This is this mission's finale. Just too late to block that attack. You got it already. But yeah, this flail is a pretty high damage weapon. It's actually one of. I think this is actually the most used weapon among the people who have it because it's part of a. I think it's part of one of the DLCs, which is one thing I will say about Vermintide that really annoys me that a lot of weapons are locked into DLCs. But uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, oh, wow, well, so smart. Wish we were like that in the real world. Like, wait, what? Oh, like, fuck, we, fuck, take, fuck, 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 we take a century or two to before we release a product? Uh, yeah, this is what happens when a Bright Stormer or a Blight Stormer is left alive too long. Because you, you could see the f how big that area was that it attacked in. And yeah, it also does that. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. And yeah, by the way, Skaven has also been invented race like the dwarves. The dwarves are a bit slow to it. It takes them a while. But the Skaven are so eager to invent that they have no safety protocols at all. Yep. <laughs> like, it's extreme. When it comes to woman engineering, you can't trust it will work. It's it's uh, having an accident extremely rare. But as given, you can count it will fail at some point, sooner or later. Yeah, you can. I think you can count more on it failing than it working. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Dwarves are definitely cautious about the door. Some of them are also they can be the traditionally. So some dwarves still don't like gunpowder weapons. But some while, 
But else they managed to praise it in invention due to how much it has helped them. And they have done some very impressive. I think some of the weapons are here as engineer, like the Grudge Raker. Uh, Which is a shotgun. Shot yeah, they can control kill 12 orcs in one shot. Housekeeping. <laughs> the only thing is, you can't keep your house. Yeah, if you want how big orcs are over here. Well, it depends how old they are, but the, um, like three or four meters high, and they look like green gorillas. Uh, uh, this bar that she and I has here, this is her overcharge. It, if it fills up completely, it happened once during, earlier in the mission. Uh, she basically starts to explode, but. Uh, yeah, the the Unchained special is specifically tied to that because, uh, let me find the group. She blows up without dying. It was a bit Yay. of a waste there. But yeah, we're at the end anyways. And well, combined with uh, this class's very high health, 180 total down there. And yeah, the <laughs> Shiana is a freaking tank with this one. She also has 50% yeah, damage reduction because burning half of the damage. Yeah, half of the Sorry. damage that she takes goes into the overcharge. Let's see. I think this will maybe our last run. Uh, yeah, eight minutes. Uh, not much time for another one if we want to keep below two hours. But we could go a little bit longer. Yeah, do I have some folks probably that want to want me to go down and we'll come them back? Okay. But yeah, each of these characters, well, are <laughs> are certainly interesting on their own. And there's enough classes for everyone to find something worthwhile. And even then you can mix yep, it up with the talents and weapons. Yep, and also a lot of lore. Like, I'd have been playing Warhammer a lot and all that, but there's still a lot of lore I don't know due to there's so much of it. <clears throat> Pardon again. <clears throat> okay, yeah, let's leave, let's call that the last level, and then we'll just spend a bit looking a bit more over, yes, just stuff. <clears throat> okay, we didn't get any of the books, but oh well. I really should try going into the champion difficulty at this point because uh, my stuff is as well, as good as I can get it at the moment without getting veteran material, which is very, very rare as I only have like two of them in total after yeah over 120 hours of play and someone isn't pressing the return to keep button. <clears throat> But yeah, I'll just give a quick glossary of what each of the classes are good at. <clears throat> as soon as... This really annoys me just sometimes. <clears throat> Come on. There we go. I'll have to disband, sadly, for them, but be, otherwise one or two of them are likely to just try and start a new mission. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, Tall's Keep there. This is also a bit of a... <laughs> this is, this is uh, the main hub. The Red Sky is because of an ongoing event. And over here you can change your heroes. But you can also just use some hotkeys like H or just from the escape menu. Nice. And yeah, let's start at the top in the order that you actually get introduced. Actually, for that, I should put uh, Sienna one higher 
Very well. I was going to say in the order that you are introduced to them in the tutorial. First off, we have Mark Scruber as his mercenary class. Uh, each character has passive abilities. Uh, a passive, uh, they're, they're special, and some perks. Uh, with the mercenary, pace strikes, hitting three enemies in one swing, uh, grants 10% increased attack speed for six seconds. You can upgrade that further to 20%, but you need to hit four enemies. But with some weapons, you can really just start swinging quickly with that. And morale <laughs> boost, Marcus grants all nearby enemies 25 temporary health, which was the, the white portions of the health bar. Those will start burning down with time once you're out of combat. Oh yeah, and, that's the kilo hat. And yeah, he staggers, yeah, that, that also staggers nearby enemies. That's one, that, I'll actually show that now. Because that's one of the cos cosmetics I got my hand on. <laughs> the lucky horseshoe. <laughs> Some cosmetics you get just by leveling your characters. Others you can buy from Loner here. That's most of what these silver coins you get from the quests are for. And some of them are just only for cash. <laughs> but most of them you can get get if you play the game for a while. <laughs> now, some of these are pretty freaking nice. Now, I've spent a bit on some of those outfits. But yeah, back to what I was saying. Loner being the lippy. But yeah, the mercenary is very good overall. Good against swarms, and with some weapons, he can especially deal a lot of damage against bigger creatures. The Executioner Sword, this one actually. Uh, the charge attack, that does a lot of damage if you can land it, which should be pretty easy since it's a downward slash like that. Moving on, we have the Huntsman. The Huntsman is a bit of an oddball because Marcus has the most amount of weapons of any character in the game, I believe, but the fewest amount of ranged weapons. And well, the Huntsman is a range specific is a <clears throat> is a specifically aimed. Well, the Huntsman special powers are mostly aimed at range stuff, which makes it odd combined with that low weapon counts. Uh, yeah, ranged headshots recover one ammunition. Marcus disappears from sight for six seconds. When he attacks or fires a ranged weapon, he gains boosted ranged damage attack, and shooting his ranged weapon does not consume ammo. Uh, which, most of his weapons are pretty slow, so that really doesn't do too much, but it is very effective with one of the ranged weapons I found, which is this thing here. <laughs> So yeah, you can put a lot of damage into something with this. It's basically six, you know, 16, 8, you know, free shots with that. And beyond that, he has Poacher's Mark, double effective range for ranged weapons. I'm not entirely sure if, what that means. It's probably that the further something is away, the less damage uh, an attack will land on it. And let's actually move away a bit so they don't start chatting too much. Because, yeah, the characters will start chatting with Loner as well, if left alone. Then we have the Foot Knight, which is a, a bit of a tank class. Uh, protective Presence order reduces damage taken by 15% for every character that's nearby, so that's very useful. And then the Special Valiant Charge. Marcus charges forward, slamming into enemies and knocking them back. This can be really good against hordes because they, when they are knocked down, it takes them a bit to get back up, making for easy slaying. Let's see, Tall's Fortune grants an extra stamina shield, which is those shields, allowing you to block or push more. And then, yeah, No Guts, No Glory reduces damage taken by 10%. I'm not entirely sure if this and that stack on top of each other. If it does, it would it would mean that yeah, the Fortnite takes 25% less damage on average. And yeah, a bit of a tank uh, class. Very nice. Then, well, we've already seen the Grail Knight for a bit. 
And yeah, the, the Veil Knight is a very heavy damage dealer, but also a bit of a support because of this. Upon entering a mission, the Lady of the Lake grants... Let's, let me tap away for a bit here because I have the chat program that's blocking part of that. So, uh, not that. There I would we go. read it, but it's too small for me to read. Yeah. Uh, upon entering a mission, the Lady of the Lake grants two random duties for the Grail Knight and his party to complete. Upon completion of a duty, the party is granted a benison for the rest of the mission. These are mostly random from what I've noticed, and stuff they give is, yeah, extra attack power, extra attack speed, health regeneration, and so forth. And yeah, Blessed Blade as the career skill. Marcus equips a Blessed Blade and slashes down the Great Force, smiting any evil creature caught in its wick and dealing heavy damage. 25% uh, <clears throat> more damage than the first enemy hit. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure specifically what that means. I'm guessing on the first hit with an attack. 10% uh, movement speed and can use shields to block warp fire thrower attacks. Hey. Then we move on to the dwarf, Borden Gorkson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is one of the premium ones. This one I have to buy. One of the pre premium outfits, that is, because it it's freaking stoic to vast from how to train your dragon. There's no other way to describe this. I did not I did not do this. I don't want to <laughs> just look so comical. Uh, yeah. Ranger veteran, of course, mostly ranged uh, uh, aimed or yeah. That's, that's, uh, survivalist drops uh, specials drop ammo pickups on death that restore 10% of maximum ammo when picked up. It says specials, but it's more when a special is killed by either Barden or anyone else, then Barden himself will drop the ammo pouch. It can be very useful when you're playing with multiple ranged uh, uh, careers. And career skill is disengaged. Barton deploys a smoke bomb for 10 seconds. So yeah, it, it causes a stealth field. We've saw that a few times. That conceals him from enemies whilst he stays inside the cloud. Also gains increased range attack damage, uh, range attack power while concealed. So yeah, it's basically the Huntsman's version, but uh, different and longer lasting. And yeah, Barton has a few better ranged weapons, I'd say. Uh, loaded for battle, more ammo that you can bring along. Many of these care rangers have extra ammo that they can carry. Like Carillion here, who could outright carry double. Fast hands, faster reload. An ingenious improvisation. Using any healing supplies, potions, or grenades has a 10% chance to not consume the item. Okay, I didn't know that one, actually. And then we move on to the Iron Breaker, which yes, well, <laughs> it's a bloody tank class, as you can obviously see. <clears throat> drum wheel, uh, drum, yeah, drum wheel armor. I really need a freaking drink for my throat at this point. All the more reason to stop. Then soon, completely absorbs one hit of damage every twenty seconds. One of the easiest perks that you will see uh, that you'll get on this. Yep is right over let's see where is it it should be here somewhere where is it okay this one grimwill uh, curse when grimwill armor is removed all nearby enemies are knocked back or tunnel fighter which reduces the cooldown to 10 seconds instead So that's it. Those are very useful perks. And well, as a tank, he has also got a taunt here in the form of impenetrable. Barden taunts all nearby man-sized enemies, which is basically every every enemy in the game except for monsters. Uh, gains increased defense and can block any attack for the next tw uh, 10 seconds. So basically, as long as you are blocking, you are invulnerable for 10 seconds. <clears throat> Iron Breakers in a nutshell, they are fierce. <laughs> and on top of that, all any damage he does take is reduced by 30%. <laughs> he also has extra stamina and decreases stun duration after getting hit by an attack by 
I'm not specifically sure what it means with stun duration, but I'm thinking it probably means like when you're getting when you are doing something and you get interrupted by an attack. That that's probably what meant uh, what's meant. <clears throat> then we have the Slayer, which well the name says it all. This <laughs> this class is all about just slaughtering things, specifically big things. Trophy Hunter, hitting an enemy grants a stacking attack buff, increases damage by 10%, stacking three times, buff lasts two seconds. So yeah, the, the Slayer wants to be in the middle of the battle. I, I, technically not in the middle, because if, if you're in the middle, you're going to get swarmed and surrounded and killed. But yeah, you want to be fighting constantly as the Slayer. His special attack is, well, Leap, which also <laughs> kind of says it all in the tin. Barnan leaps forward to stun a target and gains 30% attack speed for 10 seconds. So yeah, stop, stack those and you have 60 <laughs> extra attack speed right there already. And on top of that, even this again, Path of Carnage, increase attack speed by 7.5%. So that's two thirds mm. faster than a normal here that he can attack. And, okay, is it charge attacks can be interrupted by damage as well? Rangy Grit. <laughs> uh, uh oh. And yeah, here's his, uh, D his DLC career, the Outcast Engineer, which puts the focus back on uh, ranged again. But this one is a bit different with its special because instead of just doing something. Uh, uh, launching some big attack or something with your special instead you pull out this thing the steam cannon and you use your sp your special bar as an ammo bar you do have to reload it though or wherefore it will fill up again but yeah that's certainly different I see this one used quite a lot as well now there we go Building pressure, holding R, re uh, hold, uh, holding reload with the steam assisted frank gun, Mark II, uh, equipped uh, builds pressure. Each stack of pressure lasts for 12 seconds and gradually restores the ability bar. Stacks up to five times. Yeah, you have to reload this thing, but it will just keep uh, reloading even if you don't have it equipped at the moment then. And yeah, like I said, he pulls out the gun and yeah, he starts firing with <laughs> Uh, he also has 50% extra ammo. Increases range power of nearby allies by 10%. Okay. And can, this, one is, this one is certainly noticeable. Bardin can carry up to three bombs of any type at one time. Pressing the bomb bind and key bind cycles between them. Because he's the only one who can carry multiple at once. Makes sense. No. Moving on to the elf, Carillion. Her first career is the Waystalker. Uh, currently what she has equipped here is not really a premium skin, but this is because I I got this skin because I also own Vermintide 1. Yes, owning that gives you a, a skin for each character as well. This is would be her normal look here. It's comfy. But yeah, the Waystalker is another range class, but <clears throat> she also has this, Amarante, which she regenerates 3 health every 10 seconds when below half health. Personally, I've never really noticed it that much, in part because as a ranger, well, <laughs> you either stay back or anything that gets near you dies really quickly. Uh, her true... Uh, True Shot Volley is her career skill, where she shoots a volley of arrows that seek out enemies in her path. Basically, if you use this against a big target, it kills it instantly. If you use it against a horde, they are suddenly a lot less of a horde. So yeah, this, this, this career you'll also see a lot used. <clears throat> and like I pointed out earlier, she has double ammo capacity with her weapons. And also double effective ranged. Again, I presume that means that uh, normally uh, arrows and such would deal less damage to far away targets. Though I've personally not noticed it too much. And yeah, she also has rain. She has zoom with her weapons. Re bound to weapon special by default. Actually, let's let's take a check on that. 
Okay. Yeah, not many weapons make use of uh, the special uh, attack key. I didn't actually know that Karelian had that. That would make sniping a lot easier. And then we have her melee class, the Handmaiden. Dance of the season increases dodge distance by 15%. Uh, to show off a bit, that is what that counter in the lower right is about. That's from another mod that keeps a count of how many dodges you have left. If you go, if you run out of that, you get a lot less distance when you try to dodge. Or it should be. Luckily, they refill really quickly. <clears throat> moving on. Her special is dash. Krillian swiftly dashes forwards, moving through enemies. Uh, on this, on the sound of that, it isn't that useful. Uh, but it does, yeah, it does fit in with her other stuff. And also, there's the fact that it cools uh, down really quickly. Only 20 seconds. Because, besides being melee, the Handmaiden is also very support-focused, specifically because of this one here, Ariel's Benison. Increases Karelian's revive speed by 50%. When Karelian revives enemy allies, she heals them for 20 health. Okay. That, and, well, she also has this Renewal Aura. Increases stamina regeneration by 100%. Stamina regeneration as well. Yeah. So she can be very useful when trying when someone needs to get their ass saved. Next up, we have the next uh, melee class for her, the, the Shade. I haven't played the Shade much. Uh, that's because she's very fragile. She she plays mostly like a rogue would in Dungeons and Dragons games and such. As you can see here, double damage when attacking enemies from behind with melee attacks. And let's move away from loner again before he starts chatting our ear off. Uh, normally over here would be another character, Alyssa. But because of one of the DLCs, she has moved to another spot. Oh, and this is the trophy room. Dear. Back to the heroes. Yeah, this shade. Her career is her her, yeah, her career skill is infiltrate, uh, becomes undetectable, gains bonus damage and can pass through enemies, lasts for five seconds or until she attacks. Now that would sound very weak as well, but the, there's also let's see there ta -ta. she should all she, I believe she has one talent that allows her to stay stealth even after. Let's see. Okay, that also works by cooling it down really fast. How, what is the cooldown timer? Oh, minute and five. Okay, that is very, very long, I'd say. But yeah, this class can deal out a hell of a lot of damage when it is played right, though. I, I just don't know how to play it right. <laughs> Let's see. Melee attacks from stealth are always critical. Critical strikes mean that they deal 150% <clears throat> damage. Uh, blur. Pairing an attack and quickly dodging Grand Skrillian stealth for a short period. Okay, so that's how you stay stealth. You, well, you parry an attack, dodge, then you get the stabbing. And, yeah, with that uh, perk we saw there, that would cool down her special a lot more as well. And let's see. Charge, critical backstabs, instantly slay man-sized enemies. And since all of her melee attacks from stealth are critical, it means if you or stealth, and you charge one of your attacks, it will instantly kill anything. It's probably, uh, I think, yeah, I, I think the Chaos Warriors count as man-sized as well. So, yeah, okay. Very, very powerful, but also very uh, hard to get a control of. Moving on to her DLC career, the Sister of the Thorn, which is a, again, a ranged and support mix. A cluster of Radiance. Krillin is granted Radiance, her career special, uh, oh no, a, f a free use of her career skill every 60 seconds. And her special is Thorn Wake. Conjures up a Thorn Wall that hinders enemy movement. The Thorn Wall lasts for 6 seconds. It knocks back enemies that it's cast upon, and it blocks them from moving through it. 
So if there's a horde coming through somewhere, you can block them off to get a bit more time. And while well, just summoning it in, in summoning it in front of a or in the middle of a horde will also just disrupt them. Okay. Black Venom Blades. Melee attacks apply a poison that deals damage and increases damage suffered by 12% for 10 seconds. Very nice. It also allows your enemies, your, your allies, to deal a lot more damage as well. The sustenance of leechlings. Whenever another party member receives temporary health while at full health, Skrillian gains temporary health instead. So that helps keep her alive. And all healing received by the party is increased by 25%. Uh, oh, um, I had to check the time. Uh, yeah, we're a bit over time. So I think I'll just go over the last few a bit quicker. Uh, the Witch Hunter Captain is another... Uh, well, I'll, I'll point out the ranged one. Well, there's only one ranged one here. The Bounty Hunter. He has a special that deals a hell of a lot of damage. And... Yeah, he's a guaranteed a crit every 10 seconds with his range attacks, more ammo, increased uh, reload speed. Winch Hunter Captain, when you tag an enemy, uh, with, well, to have it be highlighted on screen, they'll take more damage. Does not stack with similar effects. Uh, he also has a shout, like with the mercenary, but instead of granting temporary health, he grants a uh, <clears throat> critical hit chance. 25%? I thought it was 5%. Okay, I, I got that wrong. He also can block all light attacks from the front, uh, not charge attacks from enemies, and critical hit shots instantly slay man-sized targets. The Zealot here is a bit of a berserker as well, because he gains power the lower his health is. So, yeah, he can get up to 30% extra power from uh, being hurt. And, well, if you have something that can get a lot of temporary health, which doesn't count for uh, this, you can still be very you know, healthy and keep slaying a uh, friend over. And, yeah, his yeah. special gives him attack speed after a charge. Uh, charge, he can't be interrupted. And he... Okay, I heart of iron resist death on taking lethal damage. I Presuming that means that if he were to take a hit that would normally kill him, it would put him on one health instead. And yeah, the Warrior Priest of Sigmar. The latest of the DLC careers, which is a bit of a, a battle tank, basically. Saltspire gains fury when enemies die nearby. On reaching 100%, he briefly enters Righteous Furies and in attacks smite the enemy for 20% of weapon damage. He loses when out of you know, combat, so you have more damage. And uh, Saltspire imbues himself or an ally with a shield, rendering them immune to damage for five seconds, which explodes and hurts um, <clears throat> which explodes and hurts enemies after. Beyond that, he has 30% bonus to power versus Chaos Warriors and Beastmen standard bearers, because yeah, those are directly linked to the Chaos Gods. And also this 100% cure res uh, curse resistance. So he is not affected at all by Grim Wars. And yeah, damage dealt to Saltspire is reduced by 20%. A further 20% of incoming damage is dealt to Saltspire over 3 seconds, but cannot be killed by, you know, by damage from that. I haven't seen that much myself, but I haven't played the Warrior Priest much. And last but not least, we have Sienna. She is mostly ranged focused because, yeah, she's a wizard, but her overheat mechanic keep prevents her from using it too much. Uh, as the battle wizard, she has tranquility. After not casting spells for six seconds, automatically vents overcharge. You can vent overcharge yourself by hit, trying to reload, but that will damage you. So you need to be careful with that. Uh, her career is firewalk, which is basically she leaps forward and leaves a well a blanket of fire in her wake that damages enemies. Uh, also, overcharge increases spell damage speed by up to 30%. Yeah, most of, I believe, all of her classes oh, benefit from having high overcharge. So, or, yeah, overcharge it is. So, it is a bit of a, you know, a balancing act of keeping her, keeping it high for the bonuses, but not too high that you, you know, accidentally blow yourself up. And she deals more range damage. 
the pyromancer increased critical chance uh, <clears throat> increased critical chance based on overcharge level up to 30 percent and unleashes a fiery projectile that seeks out foes so somewhat similar to Carillion's special and also more range damage and last but not least at the moment unchained 50 percent of damage is uh, transferred to overcharge and like i said her special she um, it, she explodes intentionally draining her overcharge and damaging enemies around also when normally when you normally when you get high on overcharge you start to slow down but unchained does not have that and yes see her overcharge perk is that she gets increased melee damage as well so sort sort of like sig uh, warrior priest she is also a bit of a battle tank And yeah, that's a, a not so short summary of all of the classes. So <laughs> yeah, let's leave it at that. Uh, yeah, no Minecraft like we had planned, but oh well. Hopefully it works next week. For now though, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone else for watching now or later. And thank you for Atreus for chatting along. Uh, hope to see you next time as well, whenever you're available. And thank you as always, Drakir. You're most welcome, my friend. And yes, uh, I'll ask around about what the hell is up with this, uh, the, the Minecraft server. Uh, but yeah, at least we tried. Uh, for next week, we should be able to stream on Tuesdays and Fridays with Technomates instead of the usual Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, I'm not too sure about the weekend yet, so we'll have to see about that. <clears throat> so, yeah, don't think there's really anything else. So, thanks again for watching, and until next time, have a nice day, and until then. Be safe, folks, and watch out for chaos cultists. <laughs>